slope fields are are something familiar to you because you've done this before. If I were to take, uh, let's say, y equal to x cubed plus 3x, what's the derivative of that? What's the derivative of this? 3x squared plus 3. But on this side, what is the derivative? It is, with respect to x, dy dx. So this technically is a differential equation because you're taking the derivative of x with respect to x, and you don't know this, but there's a dx dx here. We just never wrote it because change in x with respect to change in x is redundant. So we never wrote that. But we were really doing a differential equation. All along, we have didn't realize that there are an infinite number of other possibilities like this one here. Can you take the antiderivative, if you had dy dx equal to x squared plus 3, what's the antiderivative of that? Well, that's going to be y equals x cubed over 3 plus 3x, right? Plus c. But how would you take the antiderivative of both of these sides if there's a y over here? You couldn't do it, could you? Yet. We're going to do that this chapter. Uh, this is the very beginning of a bigger world of calculus called differential equations or Diffie Q. And the idea of Diffie Q is, is you've always had x's on one side and y's on the other. And y has always been to the power of 1. But there's a whole bunch of others. You could do this to the power of 2. You could do this to... Uh, x. You can even have a dy dx in the equation over here. Okay, we just haven't done those yet. And so that, that's what's coming. And it's a complete different set of, of um, techniques to do it. Well, let's start off first. y is my function. And I'm just going to say this right out front. This is always the goal of differential equations, is what is the y function. X is our independent variable, and we can have any type of derivatives of y, y double front. So um, when you write these f as an equation, f of x, y, y prime, y double prime, these can all be in the equation, which you have never seen before, have you? I mean, it, you haven't seen any equations with a y double prime in it other than on one side. So first order is what we're going to do here. This is for HL2 first order. This is for the next level. We don't do second order here. BC doesn't do HL or doesn't do first order differential equations except for one common one, separation of variables. But we're going to take on some others. Uh, second, third, you have to go to the next level to do that. I wish we could. I think it would be a lot of fun. And when I say fun, I mean it would be a lot of work. Uh, let's see how this kind of works. So uh, my goal is always to find the y equal function. Well, let's see if this is a differential equation for this solution. So what is the derivative of e to the 2x? 2 e to the 2x. Very good. What's the second derivative? 4 e to the 2x. So what we're going to do is wherever we see a y double prime, I'm going to replace it with this. So 4e to the 2x minus, now wherever I see a y prime, I'm going to put in 2e to the 2x. And then wherever I see a y, I'm going to replace it with e to the 2x. Now, is this true? Is 4e to the 2x minus 6e to the 2x plus 2e to the 2x, is that equal to 0? Yeah, it's true. So all this is a technique is for verifying. It's not for actually proving. All right, next. Go to slope fields. We're going to talk about slope fields. The classic slope field is this one. 
Uh, what is y equal if we have e to the x minus 2x? What's it equal to? Well, what's the antiderivative of e to the x? e to the x. Antiderivative of negative 2. x. Negative 2 x squared over 2. So I'll just say x squared. Plus what? You got it. So I don't know what this function looks like. Uh, I'm just going to draw a function. I'm not saying this is what it looks like, but I, I'm just going to make it, make it up. Let's say it does something like that. That's that function. But what does it do if it's plus c? What does it do? Well, plus c does what? Moves it up. And so what you end up doing is you have a, an infinite number of these going up, and you have an infinite number going down. I'm just trying to get a bunch here. All right. So if you were to make dots every so far this way, or dots every so far this way, What you'll get are locations of slopes. And given this original equation, if you knew the x, the x here, there's no y, but if they were given an x and a y, you could see where what the slopes are. And I'm just kind of following this, going with the flow so to speak. And you can kind of see the shape behind it, right? Now what's cool about this is that these slopes at a point really do kind of give you an idea of what it looks like behind it, doesn't it? And that's what we're going to do. We're going to make these slope fields using points, and then we're going to try to picture where, where the curves are behind it. Now, what would you need to do to snatch this one right here? If I wanted this one, what do I need to get this and only this curve? What do I need? Any point, any point here, x, y. So if I had this point, x, y, then I could tag this one by following those slopes. Or if I had this point here, you could tag it by going this way. So all you need is a slope field and a point, and you can get the all desired y function. That's what I'm trying to do. That's what we want is we want one of these. Okay. So I'll give you a quick example. Uh, here's dy dx. Can you do this one with me? Find this this uh, relationship. Now we couldn't take this antiderivative easily because there's a y and a dy dx takes a technique you're going to learn in a couple of days uh, after break. All you do is you take the x value. So I'm just going to go negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and I'm going to go up 1, 2. I think we went back to 3 here. Okay, We're going to take the point x negative 3, y1. So this one right here, and we're going to find out using this equation what the slope is. So this is the dy dx. These are the values. So negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. So at negative 3, 1, the slope is negative 2. So you draw that little, and I'm going to use it in green here. Uh, negative 2 plus 1 is going to be negative 1. So at negative 2, 1, the slope is a little bit this way. At negative 1, 1, what's the slope? zero. And you can kind of go through here. You can see these pretty dramatically. So this will be zero, then it'll be one, then it'll be two, three, and four. Okay. Now go to two, negative three. Well, when we add these up in the formula, you get negative one, zero, one, two, three, four. So at Negative 3 up 2, the slope is only negative 1 this time, and it's flat. Then it's 1, 2, 3, 4, and this will eventually be 5. And that's how you 
make those slope fields. It's simple, isn't it? Simple, but not hard. And calculators can do it as well. So now go down to the assignment. Go right down to the homework number one. Now you're going to do the first two slides, which are slope fields. We're going to do one together because I think it's helpful to see it. Uh, we're going to have an x, a y, and a dy dx. Okay, make a little grid here. And we're just going to pick on negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and we'll go up to there. You can do as many of these as you want. Why did I draw it over there? I don't know. Okay, so we're going to pick if x is negative 2 and y is 0, negative 1, y is 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 2, 0. And we're going to see what these are. So x is always x plus 1. Doesn't matter what the y is. So negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0, 1, 2, 3. So you can see that the first set, negative 2, 0, will be negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now let's change this y to a 1. What will happen if the y is 1 but the x's are the same thing? Nothing. They'll still be the same. And the same here. Same here. more of these you do, the, the more accurate it is. And if I were to pick a point, oh, let's do green here. Let's say I pick the 0, 0. Can you kind of see a follow-up here? Kind of see how this, if you followed it, you'd get this shape? Can you kind of see that? What shape is that? Parabola. What's the antiderivative of x plus 1? Antiderivative x squared plus x, right? So it's going to be shifted over 1 and up to 0. What do you know? See, that's what we're doing. We're finding the y value. I'm not looking for a point. Don't worry about that last step. Could you make those grids for these? Just the circled one. I'm not sure you can. So would you go to slide 3 and slide 4 and I want you to wait with slide five. We'll do five and six tomorrow, okay? I don't want to overload you today with homework, but uh, we're going to do those. Go to, that one's pretty good, but go to this one here. We're going to do this together. So here are the slope fields. You're going to find out what the y equations are, okay? So in other words, Take D here. If I connected one of these points and followed it, what shape do you get? Flat lines. So which of these 7 through 14 would work for that straight line? 7. So that would be D. So we're going to cancel that one out. All right. Uh, how about H here? What do you think that would be? 8. Yep. Yeah. And so you'll fill that out, finish 1 through 4 for tomorrow, pages 1 through, one through